now to our top story. Tiana McLeese was talking to that guy who ended up in that storm drain. It looked like a joke, but really there's a lot more to this story. Yeah, Tiana, we know that you were able to talk to this guy. What did he have to tell you about how he ended up there? Well, he says, yes, he did go into the manhole looking for his cell phone, but he says he didn't drop it. He says gang members attacked him as he was walking home on this street, and they threw his cell phone into the manhole. Even police had to snap this picture before pulling the 21-year-old man out of this gutter on Holly Aloha Way. I just heard, like, this faint screaming. Brianna Mooney found the man about 2 a.m. Thursday morning. He apparently had been stuck in the manhole in front of her house for 40 minutes. She could see him from her bedroom window. And I just see these feet, like, dangling in the, the drain, and I was... Like what? Brianna says she immediately called her neighbor, Christina, who then called 911. And like five cops came and they all stood around looking at him because I don't think they could believe what they were seeing. The man apparently dove into the manhole after dropping his cell phone. I figured he probably was trying to get something. Now, just about everybody is wondering, how did this guy get into this storm drain? You can see that it's very heavy, just trying to pull it off. And then look at the diameter. It's not that big. I can get my hands down in there, but I don't know. Oh, my head and my shoulders. Yeah, that's how he got in. Were you laughing? I was laughing. It was so funny. His feet were just going back and forth. And it was just, it was weird to see because you, you don't see that like ever. Now, a lot of people are laughing about this, but I'm joined here live with Jared Medeiros. He's the 21-year-old man who was stuck in this manhole. And, Jared, you say this isn't funny because you were attacked. Um, yes, I was walking to my buddy's house. that actually lives in the corner, and uh, four guys walked by me and said something about a gang. And um, I didn't think much. I kept walking, and then I got hit in the back of the head, and they um, started jumping me. I got kicked in the face. I was on the ground getting kicked. My head's busted open in several different spots on the top and all over on the side. And then um, they threw my phone in the drain. And when I got up, I just remember my head leaking blood. So I went after my phone to call for help. Now show me some of your other injuries, because, I mean, you're pretty bruised up here. Uh, right there. I got spots where, like, it feels bruised from them kicking my ribs. My ribs all feel sore on the back. My now, have you, do you, why didn't you tell police about this? Um, I don't remember actually meeting with the police. My head was split open in a couple different spots, and I don't even remember having any police contact. I just remember getting dropped off at my mom's, which I should have had medical treatment, which I don't know why they didn't give me medical treatment. I read the paper, and it says I had problems breathing. I don't understand. Were you, were you drunk, Jared? No, not at all. I, the only thing I was, I woke up confused. Like, I felt dizzy when I woke up. I had multiple head injuries, and I, okay. I just didn't feel actual right. I I don't know exactly what was wrong. Well, thank you, Jared. I'm so sorry that this has happened to you. Well, there you have it, guys. That's Jared Medeiros' explanation of how he ended up in this manhole. We have not talked to police about this, but I'm very interested, as I'm sure you are, to hear what they have to say.